Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution R Set Play, and today I am going to be reviewing a new product, or a new to me product. These are the Krita Color Aquarelle Oil Pastels, and it's the 20 set. And this is not a sponsored video, this is a set that I happened to pick up when I was at an art store recently. I have worked with water soluble oil pastels in the past. Normally, I work with the Caran d'Ache Neo Color ones. But what struck me about these ones is that on the back, they claim that they are the highest light fast rating category. And it seems to apply that all of their colors are of the highest light fast ratings. So that kind of excited me because for some reason the Caran d'Ache ones don't seem to have the light fast ratings on them. So I got the Krita color ones because I kind of want to compare them to the Neo colors, but I'm very excited. I'm hoping that they work well. They're actually a lot pricier than I expected. I think that on Blick right now, the Caran d'Ache set is going for about $39.91 for a 30 count, but these ones are going for $54.50 as of tonight when I just looked it up. And I thought that was kind of odd that Krita color one of their products would be more expensive than Caran d'Ache. I really thought that was strange. I picked mine up for like $46, I think. And I got mine at Artisan Craftsman Supply, which is semi-local to me. Anywho, so after all that, let me open this up. So as we can see, we've got a very colorful cover, you know, cardboard case. It goes on the outside, has the information about the light fast. And it is in a tin. Mine's a little bit dented up, which I didn't realize when I first bought it. Let me see if I can get it open. The struggle is real. Whew. And it's hinged, so it stays on there. So that's kind of nice. They're all in their plastic still. And this does come with their package insert. Oops, upside down. So it talks about their other products and basically what you can do with their other products. It also talks about this product. So you are seeing me actually unwrap it. This is fun. As she says as she goes off camera. My, my table's actually tilted, so I didn't dare to unwrap it on the table because I didn't want them all to fall out. Okay, so first impressions. I not sure how I feel about them actually. The look is kind of, mm, I don't know, that I like that you can peel it like you can with the Caran d'Ache ones, but the black paper seems a little bit on the cheesy side. Let's see if I can get that to focus better. Has the name and it has the light fast rating rate on it and that is very exciting to me. I mean, when you're buying a product that costs a certain amount of money, you want to make sure it's not going to fade out on your wall. So if these work as well as the Caran d'Ache ones, then it might be a great deal because these are all supposedly highly light fast and it at least has that information on them. I'm not sure if these are sold open stock though. I'm going to have to check that and I will let you know. I know the Caran d'Ache ones are open stock. So now I am going to swatch a few of them. And I'm actually going to swatch, I've decided I think I want to swatch them beside the Caran d'Ache ones so I can kind of get an idea. And I'm going to swatch them out and then I'm going to add some water to them. So I hadn't really intended for this to be a compare side by side at first. When I first bought these I figured I would try them out and then I figured, you know what the heck, let's make a video about it. And just kind of see what we have going on. So I'm going to try and choose a couple colors that are similar in the sets so that I can kind of have an even playing field. So right now I'm going to, I'm kind of just going to do like a test to see how long it takes to, I mean that goes down really well. It doesn't take long to cover the paper. And I should mention I am using the Strathmore Mixed Media 400 series paper for this. It's one of my favorite papers. And then I'm just going to get lighter. I mean, it does obviously have that crayon look. But that is creamy. Like, that's... 
that's pretty creamy and pretty saturated. I'm pretty happy with that so far. I mean, one of the fun things about oil pastels in general is the fact that they are creamy and they are very saturated. So, so far I'm not noticing like a huge difference as far as the way it feels. I mean, they're both laying down very creamy. I feel like this one is a little bit brighter. A little bit more saturated, but I feel like this one laid down more easily. But then again, that could be because this one is really well loved and well used at this point, whereas this one had more of a fine tip. So it could get into the groove of the paper a little bit. So on to yellow. Here's hoping it shows up. Oh my. I am so smart. <laughs> I grabbed my Karen Dosh and put it in the wrong place. All right. We'll pretend that that one didn't happen. We're going to go below that. I was like, wow, this feels really nice. Well, that would probably be because it's Karen Dosh, and I'm used to the way that feels. So we'll just pretend that top one didn't happen. And this is a nice lemon yellow, very, very bright. And again, it's laying down pretty smoothly. I'm pretty happy with it. And I mean, if you're going to be more expensive than Karen Dosh, then you better have your game up because Karen Dosh is a really high quality company. And here we go with the Karen Dosh again. I think quite similar. Other than, I mean, the, the hue might be a little different. Back over to the Krita color. Not a huge fan of this green so far. I guess I'm just not really happy with the hue. I mean, the true test is going to be what we can do with the water. This one is similar in color, but a little bit more on the blue side, I think, for our Karen Dosh. I don't normally swatch things. This is actually kind of therapeutic. Not a huge fan of this color so far. I keep saying that. They're just um, a little bit more pastel-y or like a little bit duller than I was hoping. But again, that might be different when we add water. I hope I gave myself enough space. This is kind of a small piece of paper. What am I doing? I keep doing that. Don't mind that. Oh yeah, look at this blue. Look at this Karen Dosh blue compared to the Krita color, which I just accidentally put there. I mean, this is a different blue than this one. This was just the closest looking that I had in the two sets. So this really is a darker blue, but the lighter blue in the Karen Dosh set was too light. So I kind of had to go with what I had. Okay, so I'm gonna set those aside for a moment. And they do, for anybody who hasn't used them before, they do feel quite similar to regular crayons. I mean, it's just what, like, you would think of from when you're a kid. I'm adding water. Dissolves pretty well. So part of the reason why I did this so dark is I wanted to see... Like how much you could carry it because I like to use them when I have water soluble products a lot of times I like to use them like watercolor pans so I might you know swatch some on a piece of paper and pick it up so I can get fainter and I just kind of that's one reason why I did them so dark up at the top but that's pretty nice I think I mean there's still a little scratchiness there it didn't dissolve completely on the first go Yeah, you can definitely, as I'm going further along, you can actually, you can definitely see, like, the staticky crayon look in that. And this was the, with a finer point. I mean, you got to remember, these are brand new, so they weren't dulled down yet like the Karen Dosh. Yellow seems to dissolve pretty well. Very vibrant. Try not to get into that mistaken... I mean, it does go pretty far. And for something that's supposedly really light fast, I mean, that's an awesome yellow. If it's, let me see what the light fast rating on that one was. I'm super excited that they have light fast ratings. So this one has a light fast rating of one. So it doesn't really say what scale it's on though. Anywho, 
Can you tell I'm tired? Okay. And this is a different kind of video for me, so let me know what you think in the comments below if you like this sort of video. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this green for the Greta color. It's not... Well, I don't know. I guess I'm just not a fan of the color itself, but it, it dissolved pretty well. Not as well as the yellow, but better than the red. All right. Yeah, this blue looks like it's going to be kind of similar to the red. It looks like it's not going to dissolve out completely. Okay, so now I'm going to add water to the Neo colors. So they kind of have that staticky look as well. I, it's probably to be expected. These are... Um, Pretty much a crayon. But look how vibrant that is. I'm really liking that blue. But definitely can see, and again, it's probably not very fair because it was kind of dull, but you can definitely still see, you know, the crackliness. Look how vibrant that is. I think that the Karen Dosh are definitely more vibrant. Like, look how bright that red is. And it's still, it's not dry yet, but I mean, most of the colors so far <clears throat> that I have tested tend to be more vibrant. I'm sorry that that blue keeps going off the screen. So, so far, Red one was the worst as far as the Krita color goes and dissolving. But they're pretty in line with each other when it comes to dissolving for the most part. The colors seem to be a little bit more vibrant here. So I think I am going to try to do a piece in the Krita color and I will record that and we will see how that goes. So I'm sketching this out with a Derwent watercolor pencil because I want my lines to be able to dissolve into the piece. And I'm just going to do a nice bright colorful lily. It's getting to be springtime here and I'm really hoping for warmer weather soon. Lilies are one of my favorite things to draw. Okay, so time to speed this up a little bit. I am switching to a time lapse and a voiceover. Since I completed this project, it has been a couple of weeks, I think, maybe even a month. And I've done a little bit more research as to what they offer for sets for this product. And it looks like they have a few different sets available online. They have a 10 count of assorted colors, a 10 count of metallic colors, which looks really fun and I kind of want to get that. A set of 20 assorted, a set of 40 assorted, and I also see some claims online that they have a set of 80, but I have not been able to find that set available at any of my usual craft shops. When I do find the set of 80 online, I can't remember what store it brought me to. It was one I wasn't familiar with, but it was no longer available. And then it also, I think they had one available at Sears, which is kind of crazy. I don't ever think of Sears as selling art supplies, but that was no longer available at Sears.com either. So I don't know if the 80 set was something that was limited edition or I don't know. I can't really find it. As far as open stock goes, I have also seen some claims online on various blogs and other reviews saying that they are offered open stock, but I couldn't find any open stock either. And I checked Jackson's Art Supply, Amazon, Jerry's Artorama, Blick, um, Artisan Craftsman, Cheap Joes, and no luck as far as finding either the 80 count or the open stock. So I don't know if that's something that was offered before but is no longer offered or if it's only offered in certain countries and it's not really readily available in the U.S. I'm not quite sure. So with that out of the way, I wanted to talk a little bit more about this project and how the oil pastels performed while creating a semi-realistic lily. 
So as far as this goes, I only had the 20 count. So the orange that I had in the 20 count was not the particular color that I was looking for is more of a burnt orange so it didn't work well for the lily that I was drawing. However, I was able to mix it really well with my reds and yellows. So as you can see, I'm kind of using a little bit of optical mixing but I'm also mixing it with water directly on the drawing itself. So I put down a layer of yellow first and then I went over it with a lighter layer of reds and mostly used the lines of the lily to create the illusion of orange because I used, um, I think I used the red for the lines in the lily and that kind of helped create the illusion of orange. So the main thing with these is that they are very much an oil pastel or like a crayon feel to them. So it isn't the easiest thing to get fine detail, though I feel that they did a lot better than I expected considering I did a fairly detailed piece and it's a fairly small piece which can be more difficult to get detail on to begin with. And there are different techniques that I was using. So I was laying the, the crayon or the oil pastel. I have a very hard time not calling these crayons because they just look like crayons to me. But I would lay the pastel down first and then go over it with water. But then there were times that I would use the pastel right over it without watering it down. So I go back and forth between that. Sometimes I would take a wet brush and flick it on the crayon. <laughs> there I go again, the pastel itself and pick up pigment that way and then lay it on my paper. So you're seeing me use a bunch of different techniques. I also went through and decided to do some scraffito techniques where I would go in and scratch some details out. It, that didn't work particularly well on this paper, but I feel like it probably would have worked better on a different surface. I, I want to try these on an ampersand aqua board or even an ampersand clay board or something to that effect because I think that I would be able to do the you know scraffito or scratching technique a little bit better because these are quite waxy and or oily and they can lay on really thick so I think that that would be easy to do on a different surface and as you see I'm just going in and doing the background <laughs> I actually masked out the middle part of the flower. However, when I pulled up the masking fluid, it was kind of difficult not to dirty the place underneath it because these smudge and blend so easily. As far as the colors go, I am curious to see what they have in their larger set, maybe their 40 set, or I am very curious about the 80 set, especially if they, if like all their colors are light fast, like all the ones in this 20 set are because I didn't really like the range of greens that I had in this set. I was kind of disappointed in that and there was a lot of green in this piece and I'm somebody who likes to do a lot of nature-based things so I need a lot of good greens and good browns and I kind of struggled with that here. Thankfully uh, yellow played a big role as it did within the lily. I'm actually kind of doing this reverse of how I usually do. Normally, I put my background in first, but I think I just got so excited that I jumped right into the lily. So now I'm putting my background in. And I used a lot of my black, a lot of it, because it was hard for me to get the values that I wanted as far as the greens went too. There was one green in there that looked dark, but then once I laid it down, it did not get as dark as I hoped. So I had to layer like a lot of black with it. I tried not to use any straight black, but it was hard not to get dull colors with the combination that I had to use. And again, that might be different with a different set. And as you can see, I just went in and I, I layered my grass and I did a lot of negative drawing or I, I drew the negative shapes to try and get the outline of the grass in a lot of the areas. And then I went in with my greens over it. So I tried to do like the shadows in the background and then layer green over the grass and the shadows so that it wasn't just like straight black shadows. The black was a little bit overpowering at times, but then other times it seemed dull. It was very strange, but I definitely used a lot more black than I expected. It's probably the shorter of all my pastels in this set now. 
I'm just going through with water and smoothing things out. Some of the colors acted a little bit better. As you saw in the swatches, they dissolved a little bit better with water. The yellow dissolved a lot better. Um, I didn't really... The red... The red didn't dissolve very well when I did the swatches, but it didn't really matter in this piece because it helped to create texture within the lily itself. So it actually lended itself really well to that. So even if it doesn't dissolve as well as you would like, you can use that to your advantage. Some of the colors were very, very vibrant, and then others, they looked more vibrant in the pastel itself, but then once it laid down, it wasn't as vibrant. As far as comparing this to the Caran d'Ache Neo colors, price-wise, I'm not very impressed. I think the Neo colors are definitely more saturated. And I did find a blog online. I'll have to link it below because I don't remember the name of the blog. But there was a blog online where somebody did a review of the Caran d'Ache Neo colors and they actually... Um, contacted Caran d'Ache and got the light fast ratings for those Neo colors. I'm not sure. I mean, if they did light fast testing on them, I'm not sure why it's not on the side of them. At least it's not on the side of the ones that I have. Maybe newer Neo colors offer it, but I'm not sure. So I'll try and link that below. I think that I would probably prefer to just go with a Neo color. I'm actually very happy with the way it came out, and I want to explore these more. But as I said, I feel like I might like the Neo Color a little bit better. But if you are in a place that they don't offer the Neo Color, then these are great. Okay, so here's my final piece. I am pretty happy with the way it came out. I would highly recommend these or any water-soluble oil pastels to anybody who is looking to make expressive marks or do abstract or brightly colorful work. However, they also work for realism and semi-realism as well, as I think that I have demonstrated in this video. So I think it's a very versatile medium and I would definitely recommend it. As far as the Krita color ones specifically, I think that they are a lot of fun and they are highly light fast, which is great. And they are pretty vibrant. However, I do think that I still like my Neo Color 2s a little bit better as far as vibrancy goes. But that could be you know, personal preference. All right, so thank you for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe. Also, if you're interested in seeing more of my artwork, I'm on social media, so check out the links in the description below.